All right, in this lesson, we're going to be looking at ratio analysis. Specifically, we are going to be looking at our debt to asset ratio. So we'll understand kind of how do we calculate that and then doing an example at the very end. So let's get started by understanding debt to asset ratio. So the debt to asset ratio is a risk analysis ratio. So the keyword here, it's, it's assessing the risk of the company. Now it identifies the financing risk associated with a company's capital structure. So we're looking at this from a financing standpoint because we don't want uh, our companies to be illiquid, which means that they don't have enough cash to be able to pay their liabilities. Um, so we use this debt ratio or debt to asset ratio to help us understand the financial risk of an organization. Now, the debt to asset ratio is pretty easy to calculate. All we need to do is we're gonna take our total liabilities and divide it by our total asset. So we're gonna take total liabilities, total asset, and that's gonna get us our debt to asset ratio. Now, what does this tell us? Well, this ratio tells us the percentage of assets financed by debt rather than by equity. So what we're saying is, you know, when companies have these assets, are they more financed by debt or equity? Debt would mean that if we don't pay those loans off, or we don't pay those debts off, the loan holder may be able to repossess those assets, which isn't always a great thing at the end of the day, especially if we're coming to a point in time where it's we're having a hard time paying those debts off. When we pay with equity, then we own it outright. And so if there is a downturn in the market and we don't have enough cash to pay for the liabilities, we would still keep our assets because we don't have any liabilities on them. Now, what are some pros and cons with that? Well, some cons of doing that where we buy use equity to buy assets is that we tie up our own money in those assets. Whereas if we borrowed it from the bank, we're not tying up our own money, we're really tying up the bank's money. And the cost of doing that is the interest that we're paying on the loan. Also, there may be some assets that are incredibly expensive, and if because they are incredibly expensive, it's hard to finance that with just our equity, so we're gonna have to go out and seek debt. So think about a home. If we said that everybody had to buy their home with cash, how many less people would be owning their own home versus now that we get a lot of people that take out a bank loan to be able to afford a home. So just think about that instance uh, when we're talking about this. Now, the higher the ratio, the more riskier the company is from a debt capital structure standpoint. So if you think about owning a home, if you only put 2% down or 3% down, you have this huge debt that you're trying to pay off. And if you lose your job, it's harder to pay that loan off. Whereas if you bought it 100%, if there's a downturn in the market, you own the home so you could still live in there and you wouldn't have a bank uh, coming for you. So if we think of that, when you put 3% down, your debt to equity or debt to asset might be 97% versus if you don't take any debt, it'd be zero. What's more riskier? The 97% because there's always a chance that the bank could call the loan back. So the higher the ratio, the more risky the company is, not necessarily better. So we also need to compare this to other companies and other past results. And the reason why we need to do that is because we may be in an industry where that's the way that we finance our assets. Real estate is a great example of this. Most companies will finance their real estate with debt rather than paying for it in all cash. And that's just how these industries work. So again, we need to compare it to the industry, not just what does it look like on our financial statement. So let's take a look at an example here. So we've got Best Buy, obviously, as our uh, point of interest. Now, I know this is incredibly small. Um, I've done my best to kind of show you. I want to show you the whole thing. So I don't just want to show you a part of what we're trying to look for because I want you to be able to find it on your own if you're looking at a financial statement from an analysis standpoint. So we're going to need our total liabilities and total assets. So I'm going to look for our total liabilities. And if you notice here, there really isn't a total liability amount. So um, we were looking here 
right here, we would get total current liabilities. Then we've got some total ass, uh, long-term liabilities and long-term debt. Um, and that's about it. So we would add all those three. An easier way of doing this is that we could just take our total liabilities and equities and subtract our total equity, which we have down here. So that's what we're gonna do here. So we're just trying to figure out total liabilities. So total liabilities would be our total liabilities and equity. So in this case, it's 12,901. And we're gonna subtract from it our total equity, which is 3,306. When we do that, we get 9595. And so that would be our total liabilities. Now we can calculate our debt to asset. So we take our total liabilities, which is 9595. And we're going to divide that by our total assets. Our total assets, if we look here, would be 12,901. And that's really 12 billion, but 12,000. 901 and if we did that calculation there we should get 0.7437 or in decimal form 74.37 percent what is that telling us that our debt to asset ratio is 74.34 percent we are financing all of our asset we're sorry we are financing 74.37% of our assets with liabilities. Is that a good thing? Mm, probably not, but Best Buy has become successful in recent years, so um, it's probably okay for them. But we do wanna watch for that because at any moment, it could be tumbling down. Why? Because they're gonna owe all of this debt, which we said was $9.5 billion or $9.6 billion, and they also have to pay interest on that $9.6 billion. So that is a little concerning from a risk standpoint. So 74.37 is our debt to asset ratio. So that is the debt to asset ratio, a very simple equation, but it tells us a lot about how risky the company is from a debt standpoint. And we want that to be as low as possible, especially in industries where debt isn't a huge conversation in the way businesses work. So that's the debt to asset ratio. Hope you enjoyed this lesson. We'll see you in the next video. Hey guys, if you like this video, make sure you press the like button below. And if you're looking for worksheets that go along with all of these lessons, head over to my website at patricklymsa.com or click in the link in the far right. And I've got your next lesson right over here. So just click that link and it'll take you to that video. So until then, we'll see you in the next lesson.